Hi, my name is Judy and I'm the City Stitcher and welcome to my FlossTube channel. Today is Sunday, November the 15th and it is a sunny but very windy day here where I am. Um, as you can tell, we're back in, in this room again. So um, generally the gist is if it's a sunny day and it's warmer than minus five, this is still a very pleasant room to be in. If it's a cloudy day and cold, then this is not a good room to spend time in. So we're going to wing this as we go through time and there's a possibility you may see a different room. Um, we'll see how we'll see how it goes. Um, but uh, if you are new to my channel, thank you for stopping by and spending some time with me. If you are a returning viewer, thank you for coming back. Um, thank you for coming back because really you know what you're in for and you know exactly what you're going to see more or less. Anyway. So the format for uh, how this video is going to go is I'm going to show you the stitching that I've worked on. I've got some stash acquisitions, uh, free charts, and hopefully I'll remember before we hit the ending part. And then of course our topic for today is let's talk boxes, which may sound confusing, but it'll make sense once we get there. So with that, let's get started. So let's guess what have I been stitching on this week? Wait for it. Da, 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 da. Still working on the bottom panel, the bottom of the center panel. Okay, anyway, so yes, still working on the Marbeck Nativity. There's uh, 46 days left in 2020 for me to finish this center panel plus the camel. <clears throat> I've had a couple of friends ask me what happens if I don't finish it in 2020. Now, it might require me to stitch 20 hours a day that week between Christmas and New Year's. <sighs> I am going to finish this in 2020, right? Let's go with that. Okay, anyway, here's what I've been stitching on this week. So what have I got accomplished? Well, you know, well, as I say, every week I've made progress. And I have made progress this week for sure. So here's where I am at. So what did I work on this week? Well, I've finished the stairs. So it's really hard to tell, but there's actually, uh, there is there is another color here b below these ones. So it actually is five stairs with alternating this darker gray, a lighter gray, dark, light, dark. It is visible in real life. Welcome to cameras and things that go with that. So the stairs are complete. I finished the shadowing around here, around the bottom of the shepherd, as well as there is a little bit uh, left up here. Uh, I have outlined and done the shadowing around the chest here, and I have put the grass in on each of the sides. So I think I've said to you before, it's like, um, despite what you see in, in the chart pattern cover, as you can see, there's more past what what they could what they chose to put on the on the front cover. Anyway, so I've now hit the outer border, so that's you know this is as far as it goes. That's all good, and the part that you probably can't see is I have started on the sheep. There's hoping to have more of the sheep done, but you know this is what it is. And we are closer to, we are almost, once I get the sheet done, then I will get to scroll up and start working on the angels again. So, it's progress. It's progress. And I have to admit, last night I did go back. So the upside to doing a YouTube channel and having the videos, which can equally be accomplished if you just chose to take pictures with your camera, I get that is that you can go back and I can go back it's like, oh, where was I a week ago? Where was I at the beginning of the month? Have I made progress? And the answer is yes, I've made progress. It is coming along. I am behind schedule. It's starting to be a little worrisome as to whether or not I'm going to make it by the end of 2020. I get that 46 days and counting. Anyway, so as I said, so the only thing I have left to do here is finish the sheep and more of that dreaded hay. Uh, so that's all I have left to do on the bottom. So for sure, next week, 
you'll get to see a different chart. It'll still be Marbeck. It'll still be the Marbeck Nativity, but it won't be this chart unless something goes horribly wrong with my week. So this might be the last time you see this chart. Won't we all be happy for that? So that was my stitching this week. Simple, easy. All right. Let's talk about some stash quisitions. So not that I need more stash and la 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 la. We'll talk about a little bit more about that in next week's video. But I was looking for something online and I happened across uh, a store. And the problem is, is when I come across stores that have things that are super discounted, I cannot help myself. So I bought some stuff. So this is from JBW Designs called the Shoe Shopper. And the words inside it say, love to shop for shoes. Uh, I know it's really hard for you to tell based on my videos, but I have uh, a sizable shoe collection. I enjoy my shoes. Um, so it seemed very appropriate and um, it was $4. That's not what I paid for it. It was super discounted, which is why it came home. Now it's a little thing. Uh, 79 by 63, so not bad, you know, could fit into a small somewhere in the plants. M Designs, checkered Christmas, so I love Christmas. You've seen M Designs before. M Designs is the company that did those trees that have the words in them. So this has been added to my collection. I might have plans for this. Carolyn Manning Designs Garden Labyrinth. Now, again, hard to see on here, but the colors are very uh, soft pastelies. Um, so the palette, the palette appealed to me. So yeah, that's, and you know me in a geometric square something with, you know, I have problems with that. Uh, Bejeweled by Turquoise and Graphics Designs. And they had a piece of fabric that I had never heard of, so I got it. So this is 28 count. Now, they've labeled it as Blueberry Lugana. The little tag here calls it Janina. And in fact, this says it's 22, not 28 count. So I may have to, I may have to count this out and see what it is, but I'd never heard of it. And it was um, economical, shall we say. And so it came home as well because, you know, I have a problem with, you know, blue and fabric and things. So those are the stash quisitions for this week. I do need to warn you. I have plans for some, stack some stash quisitions between now and the end of the year for sure. I'm plotting in my head. Some orders have been placed. Hopefully they will all come in before the end of the year. Uh, there's a few things that may not come in before the end of the year, but I've already, uh, I already know how to do it. I'm going to buy my gift certificates to pay for the thingies that if they haven't come, so it will not count towards my, you know, limited stashing in 2021 plans. Um, and yes, I get the ridiculousness of, you know, that I'm stashing <clears throat> abundantly, uh, currently to prepare for the year where I don't stash as much anyway. It's the same, it's the same logic that goes with the people who say no new starts in 2021, so they're starting a bajillion things right now. It's the same logic. So that's, I, I totally subscribe to that. And I laughed, I was uh, looking in social media, and so apparently there are some stitchers who started something where it's like 21 starts before 2021. Now I'm not gonna do that because you know I've got a focus piece, and which I really need 20, don't get me wrong, I would love to do 21 new starts but that would really screw with the plan and it would anyway I think it's funny though <laughs> the things that we do to justify because like apparently we need to justify it to ourselves and our friends and all those other people out there why we're doing what we're doing but whatever uh, so uh, yes I'm planning for my stash uh, the other part of that which I was going to highlight this week as well is don't forget 
that Black Friday and Cyber Monday are coming. And there are designers and there are Etsy shops and there are um, some LNSs and online needlework shops that do have um, Black Friday and Cyber Monday sales. So uh, monitor your social media feeds if you have them, if you've got favorite shops or uh, designers that you like. Uh, stalk them a little bit towards, you know, American Thanksgiving, because uh, you just never know what they're going to be doing. Uh, I was late to the party. I've, you know, again, because I was looking today, not yesterday, I discovered that Frosted Pumpkin had a 30% off sale. Now, I don't necessarily know uh, that I would have wanted a Frosted Pumpkin uh, pattern, but I like, I like to know about the sales in advance, so then I can participate if I need, need them. Anyway, never mind that. Uh, so, just a little warning. Uh, Black Friday is a coming, Cyber Monday is coming, and uh, while most people think of it in terms of like the Amazon and you know electronics and anyway, whatever most people think about, I of course focus my attention on stitching things and patterns and stores that have specials. So I will be keeping my eagle eyes out for that. Um, if you know of one, feel free to put it in the comments down uh, down below so others can know about it because I'm always a big uh, fan of sharing sharing the treasures when you find them. So, yeah, so between now and the end of the year, um, you might be seeing some stash because that makes total sense. We'll talk a little bit more about that next week. So free charts for this week. What have I got for you? Well... I've got uh, Priscilla and Chelsea, because uh, they just put this out. So this is um, Thankful. Uh, they put one out, I want to say back in like maybe early, late August, early September, called Blessed. So it's similar in tone to that. Uh, Blessed has sunflowers on it. This, of course, has the pumpkins. Um, and I have to say, <sighs> they've been putting those ornaments they've been putting on I'm enjoying more of them than I should. That Silent Night one, I really like that one. Again, who knows what's going to happen. Stay tuned. We'll see what the stash positions look like in the next little bit. But So there's that one. Uh, and then the designer that I'm really showing you today is Sue Hillis. Uh, she's got some free charts. Um, I forget what this is called. Spool of something. Spool and needle or something. It would help if I put it right side up. Uh, so this is what it looks like. I can't read it backwards in the camera. Uh, may your spools always be full and your needles always be sharp. Although technically, if you're using a tapestry needle, they are blunter and we don't necessarily love the sharp needles. Um, but nice, nice little design there. And again, because I'm feeling, you know, snowy, because there's snow on the ground. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, although sadly the poor snowman looks like he's enjoying it, and I guess as a snowman you would. Okay, but he's blue, which is probably why I like him. And then, um, we'll work for freezer space. I don't know that I would necessarily stitch this one for myself, but... I do think it's funny. She's got a few more on there and again uh, the link uh, will be in the notes below. So those are the free charts for this week. So if you just came for the sash acquisitions, the free charts and the stitching, it's been a really short one. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great week. If you're here for the topic, let's talk boxes. I know, and some of you might be going, I don't understand what's what's up with the boxes. So, um, someone had made a comment to me uh, in real life uh, who was talking about um, seeing more stores or more online things who were, who were having stitching boxes. And so there's a variety of forms that these boxes can take. 
So um, they could be thematic boxes. So it could be a Christmas box. It could be an advent box where it's like a countdown to Christmas, a Halloween box, a countdown to Halloween box. It could be color based, um, holiday based. It could have a theme of its own. And then depending on who you're looking at, uh, what's in that box could be anything from completely stitching supplies, taking a variety of forms from fabric, charts, threads, buttons, beads, um, things to finish your uh, stitching with. Um, it could be, there are companies out there where it, it has some stitching things, but it also has things like potentially candles or um, bath bombs or, you know, other, other thematically related things, but not necessarily stitching related. Um, so there are a variety of them out there. Um, there's a cup, so I can tell you, so I have bought boxes from Stitchy Box, uh, which I will link below. I have bought a Christmas themed box from Fiberlicious. Now Fiberlicious doesn't tend to do a lot of boxes, but sometimes they do. Um, uh, there's, again, there's, there's a Chris, there's, there's a Christmas box. And so I actually got like a, uh, fabric project holder and anyway we'll talk about that in a minute um, but there are a number of them out there you can look on floss tube if you go to YouTube and you search for floss tube and unboxing um, you can see uh, some of the boxes that people have gotten they'll tell you where they got them from and they'll show you what they got in their box um, which can be helpful if you're trying to make a decision um, you can probably also look for uh, on Instagram uh, stitching and unboxing and see what there are um, one of the things that you do need to be comfortable with I will tell you is not knowing what you're gonna get so don't get me wrong there are ones where I've I've enjoyed everything that I've gotten there are boxes that I've gotten where I'm like well this isn't necessarily a fabric choice I necessarily would have chosen for myself or a colorway that I would have chosen for myself or a finishing prod product that I wouldn't necessarily have chosen for myself but that is part of what you're signing up for when you sign up for a box you're signing up for the unknown um, so the times that I've you know again so I I ordered the Fiberlicious one because they were having it and quite frankly I ordered it because I needed a little pick-me-up for me and I thought stitching supplies would be great um, you know, and got, the box was great. I liked the fabric that I got. I got Fiberlicious over dyed threads, which were fantastic because they were Christmas, you know, color themed, which always works for me. I got that project bag. I got a chart. It was really lovely. But for me, I had a moment where they were like going, it, cause it could have been anything. And she's done a wide variety of things over the, over the years when she has done boxes. And some people have really not enjoyed their boxes. Um, again, if you don't like your box, that's on you. You sign up for the unknown. And to say not good remarks about it is inappropriate as far as I'm concerned because you signed up for the unknown. Um, again, mine from Fiberlicious was fantastic. I loved it. It was great. Um, Stitchy Box, um, you know, I, I have signed up for several of theirs again. Uh, in past years because uh, I decided I needed something for me um, so I've done I've done a Halloween countdown box I've done um, a couple of their advent uh, countdown to Christmas boxes where there's one a, a small thing that you open every day um, I think I did a summer one from them so I've done several boxes from them and you know when you do one of those boxes it's a larger box and so it has all sorts of things I've gotten charts um, you know, but I've also had one where I got a chart in one of my boxes, which was not a chart that I particularly liked, but someone again on social media was showing a chart that they had gotten from Stitchy Box, which was not necessarily their favorite. And I reached out to them and I said, Hmm, I've got this one. <laughs> and we actually did a swap. So I sent her, I sent her the chart from my box and she sent me the chart from her box, which was from a different, a different box that she'd signed up for. So it was great. Um, so we both got something out of it that was great. Um, you know, but it can be, you know, Stitchy Box does a lot of beads. So if you're looking to try something where you get beads, 
Now the thing is, the beads come and they don't necessarily tie to a specific pattern. So you need to be okay that you're gonna, you know, find a way to incorporate them or use them in something that you're doing. Maybe you just like to have beads around the house and that's okay too. Um, I've gotten several things in the stitchy box uh, boxes that are finishing items, which I have not, n okay, we, you've all seen my channel, right? I am not the best at finishing. Have I kept the finishing items? Yes, because maybe one of these days I'm going to get good and I'm going to start finishing things and I'm going to know what to do about that. Um, so I've kept those things. You know, I've gotten some fabric, you know, uh, stay tuned next year because you might see something where I actually got some brown fabric where I was like, hmm, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I think I've come up with a way to actually use it that I'm actually going to enjoy. Who knew? So again, so for me, part of the thing was I wanted to do it because one, I wanted to see what was in the boxes. Two, I wanted something where, don't get me wrong, when I go to a stitching store and I shop, I know exactly what I'm getting. It was fun to get a box of stitching related items um, where I didn't know what I was getting. That was fun too for me. It's not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. There are certain boxes where I've watched the unboxings where I'm like, okay, either that particular company or the way that they structure their boxes where I go, it's a nice idea. It doesn't necessarily appeal to me and that's okay too, right? Hey, we're not all the same. Trust me. I can see tons of you out there who are going, thank heavens I'm not stitching the Marbeck Nativity. <laughs> and that's okay, right? So there potentially is something for everybody. If you really don't like the surprise and saying, I don't, like I don't like not knowing exactly what I'm getting in the box, my answer to you is a box is probably not the right answer for you. Um, but if you're looking for something, if you've got um, people uh, who go, you know, you know that there are always people who are like, you're really hard to shop for, I don't know what to get. Hey, maybe one of the things is you say you could get me a box. Now, it's a surprise for them, it's a surprise for you, it could be a surprise all the way around. They, they come in a wide variety of price points, uh, so it's up to, uh, up to you as to how much you're choosing to spending, when you're going to get it. Um, like you could, like I know in Stitchy Box, you could put your name down for a box now that's coming in 2021. So, you know, timing's different, you're, you know, again, themes, what comes in the box, whether it's uh, fabric, again, you just have to read carefully about what the potential options are going to be that are coming in your box. Make sure that you're okay with the concept. Do some um, viewing on YouTube about unboxing, see what people have done. And then you can decide for yourself as to whether or not it's something that appeals to you. Again, this is a repeat. For me, I've participated in them usually because I, you know, wanted something for me that I actually didn't know exactly what was coming in the box. And so that was good for me and it worked for me. Um, am I currently signed up for any boxes? No. Um, Cause I'm, I'm okay at the moment. And quite frankly, uh, despite the fact that I'm adding to my stash, I don't need to sign up for a box that also adds to the stash for any whatever reasons. Um, but there, I'm a big advocate of it's always good to try something new and different periodically. Um, so if you're looking for something to try out once, and again, some of them are one-time only boxes. Um, so you just, again, read carefully when you find something, read carefully about what your options are gonna be, what it's gonna look like, what you're conceptual, conceptually signing up for, because they're never gonna tell you exactly what's in the box, and maybe try one of those. Uh, so with that, that's the topic. Uh, I know it's late in the game, so if you're still watching, thanks. We're going to do a little bit of channel stuff here at the end. First of all, let's talk to Miss Kitty. Miss Kitty, so uh, I'm going to get to use a tone of voice that I won't necessarily use with the other people because I know Miss Kitty in real life. If you looked at last week's video, Miss Kitty has a comment on there about uh, a method that potentially would help me with uh, my blending filament. I will also tell you, Miss Kitty has seen me stitching Marbeck f all, all the time. From the time I started stitching on it, Miss Kitty has known about it. 
And now, now that I'm done the star, the, the trim on the wise man's robe, but now is when she pipes up and says, hmm, have you tried snapping your filament? <laughs> now, I haven't tried snapping it since she made the comment. We did have a chat about this in real life. Um, now, there is more filament in my future with Marbeck, and so I will give it a try. And if it works out and it changes my life, first of all, I'll be really mad at Miss Kitty and she knows about it. And right now, if she's watching this, she's sitting at home and laughing to herself, going, hee hee, whatever. Um, but if it works, I will come on, we'll talk about it. Um, yeah, because there was also someone else where she was talking about it. She's like, oh yeah, I've heard about that habit. You heard about that? I'm like going, oh my goodness, I've been fighting. I keep going on about fighting with my Krynik. And there you people are that are going like, don't you do this? Now, it might not change anything. It might change my entire world. Who knows? Stay tuned for the next time I, that I work on uh, on Marbeck with Krynik. We'll see what happens. Miss Kitty. Hmm. Anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll be talking again, I'm sure. Uh, Denise. Uh, so... Enjoyed your comment, so I'm really glad that you at least tried it. And again, because this I make this comment before, it's always good to try things once. It's kind of like foods. It's always good to try it once. It doesn't mean you have to love everything, and it doesn't mean you're necessarily going to love every kind of stitching either, but I'm really glad that you tried the DMC. And I understand your comment saying, hmm, don't love working with that. I'm very familiar with that concept, but it does add something to the piece. I will also um, remind you um, that DMC metallic threads are the wiriest of the metallics. Um, so if you've got a, a different pattern and it calls for uh, Krynik or Petit Treasure Braid, while still not as nice to work with as regular fibers in the stitching world, um, they I would say both of those are easier to use than the metallic, th the DMC metallic thread. And then Miss Kitty, of course, also corrected me. I made a comment last week about Threadworks having their own, so it's technically not their own metallic thread. They do take a Krynik um, and then over dye that. So when you see a Threadworks, so, and I did notice that when I was uh, going to to note the actual color number in my show notes for last week. So I was like going, hmm, it says right on there, Krynik. So the thread, the Threadworks uh, metallic thread that I showed last week, because of course I pulled it from a stash and it came from a box from somewhere, um, was a Krynik number eight braid that Threadworks has over dyed. So Threadworks is taking Krynik products. Um, now what, what, whether it's white or who knows what the base is or what they get it, but they're taking a Krynik product and over dyeing it into what their what they're showing as their metallic options are. So that's a clarification on that one. Um, and then Kunin, um, who had a really nice comment about it was a genius use of Krynik. Um, thank you. Can't take credit for it. I'm following a pattern. Um, I agree. It does make it does make that wise men's robe look really luxurious and opulent. I totally agree with you on that. <sighs> Didn't love the journey getting there, but I love the outcome. For me, it's kind of like a little bit about cooking. I don't necessarily love the act of cooking or baking, but I usually enjoy the outcome. Anyway. So with that, uh, that is our topic for this week. I hope everybody is staying safe and doing their best to uh, make sure that they can uh, stay healthy. Um, the COVID numbers are rising globally in very large numbers, including where I am. Um, so let's, uh, we were doing better before. I don't understand how we're, you know, not doing so well now and Anyway, so let's all be safe. Let's take all of our precautionary measures, face masks, hand washing, uh, limit who you're meeting with in person. Um, you know, it's, while not necessarily enjoyable, it's something to help, that we all need to participate in to help spread, not spread the pandemic and get this thing under control. Um, 
So with that, I'm hoping that you all have a really good week. Stay safe, stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that you all find some time to get some stitching in and that you can some, uh, take enjoyment from that. And I look forward to seeing you next week because uh, I have things to talk about next week. Have a good week, guys.